If we continue along with this topic of enzyme substrate binding um, and touch back on the concept of um, the chemical <coughs> properties of the enzyme active site, the shape is important. The chemistry is probably more important. If they um, have studied a lot of the active sites, 65% um, of the enzymes that they know the structure of has one of these five amino acids in the active site. What about those five amino acids is special? Well, four of them are either acidic or basic. So back in the proteins chapter, we said there were special amino acids. The aspartic acid, the glutamic acid were on that list for being acidic. The histidine and the uh, arginine are on there for being basic. Those are your acidic amino acids and your basic amino acids. Those are your amino acids that form positive and negative charges. So if you haven't already completely put that together, In terms of all of these physical properties, anytime we're talking about positive and negative charges, whether we're talking about salt bridges, whether we're talking about charge-charge um, interactions, all of those interactions occur because of things that are in the side chains of the amino acids. The only amino acids that have positive and negative charges are the acids and the bases. That's why they are so special. The last one that we didn't talk about, um, when I say the fifth, the fifth is cysteine. Cysteine, if you remember, is the amino acid that can form those disulfide bonds. Um, and so we made a big deal in the proteins chapter talking about salt bridges and disulfide bonds and how good they were for interacting in tertiary structure, interacting in quaternary structure. This isn't quaternary structure, but we're still taking two molecules and having them interact together. All of those properties that we talked about apply here too. Anytime you have two molecules interacting, all of these things are going to be important uh, in the discussion. Okay, so that chunk right there is the first half of the chapter. It is all about enzymes. It's about the new terminology. It's about how an enzyme works, how an enzyme recognizes its substrate. The second half of this chapter is going to change gears a little bit, and we're going to move away from just how the enzyme works to how your body controls the enzyme. So we, we made a comment early on in this chapter about how an enzyme catalyzed reaction can go 10 to a power of 20 times faster. Essentially what that tells you is that most of these biological reactions won't happen unless there's an enzyme present. That's a good thing when we start getting into metabolism because what you're going to see is that more than half of what's happening in terms of metabolism has to do with how we regulate our enzymes. So the whole, the whole second half here is all about regulation. So when you talk about regulating something, the first thing that you realize is you can do one of two things to an enzyme. You can turn it on and you can turn it off. If you are turning it on or turning it up, turning it, making it more active, then you're talking about activation. If you're doing anything to turn it off or make it less active, then you're talking about inhibition. So we'll start simple, on or off. Um, we're going to spend more time um, talking about inhibition um, because biologically speaking, our body, our body does a lot more of 
turning enzymes off than it does turning them on. Um, it does both. It does both. I don't mean to say that it doesn't. Um, and so if we look at inhibition, um, there are a couple different ways to talk about inhibition. So the first thing that you should realize, this pair of adjectives and this pair of adjectives are exactly that. They are just words that describe the enzyme. Enzymes can be irreversible and competitive. They can be irreversible and non-competitive. This, this isn't a categorization. They are things that describe what's happening. Um, so if we look at this, the first descriptive term here tells you whether or not the inhibition is permanent. So if an inhibitor comes in and completely wipes out the enzyme, the enzyme is dead, it can never be turned back on again. Um, it will never, it will never function again. Um, that is irreversible. The damage that the inhibitor does to it is permanent. There's no going back. The enzyme um, is completely finished. The opposite of that um, is that the inhibition is reversible. So inhibitor never leaves, then it's a permanent inhibition. Um, that would be irreversible. If instead you have this situation, the, end, the inhibitor binds, the inhibitor leaves, the inhibitor binds, the inhibitor leaves. If the inhibitor can come and go, then that's reversible. Um, hopefully at this point, um, I had somebody ask a question um, on Friday that, that kind of made me hope that everybody was, was getting this. When we start talking about inhibitors, Everybody realizes that we now have three separate molecules <coughs> that are playing a role here. You have your enzyme, which is molecule one. You've got your substrate, which is a second molecule. And then you've got a third molecule, and that's your inhibitor. So three separate players in this game. Um, we can also talk about um, an inhibitor based on where it binds. Um, so if we, if we talk about this, um, we can say that the inhibitor binds to the same place, it binds to the same active site, in which case if both the substrate and the inhibitor bind to the same site, they're competing for who gets to occupy that site, and that's competitive. If the inhibitor finds a way to stop the enzyme without actually binding at the active site, then that's non-competitive. Um, we've already talked about allosteric regulation um, in the terms of, um, we said hemoglobin was an allosteric protein. When the first molecule changed shape, it caused a change in the second one. Um, we can also regulate enzymes that way. The definition there is the same. Something happens at a site other than the active site, and it causes um, the active site to change as well. And we can also regulate enzymes by actually covalently modifying the protein. So um, this slide here is meant to be an overview. It's a list of all the different types. Um, where we're going to head now is we're going to actually talk about each of these a little bit 